In this video, we'll take a look at how the Ragfly Uno from Skahoy can be a great routing panel for your AJ Kumo router. So here we have a 16x16 AJ Kumo and it's hooked up with our uh, Ethernet network. And this one is a Ragfly Uno or Uno from Skahoy. Um, it's PoE powered, so you see there's only like a single Ethernet cable going into the unit. It's uh, nicely inserted a little bit into the unit so that even uh, if it sits in a rack, there's uh, ample of space for the cable without uh, sacrificing depth or uh, any functionality over here. Because one of the points of this panel is that it's really so low profile that it sits nicely on a desk, as you can see, even with a nice tilt. So it has the perfect 10 degree angle for operation like this. Uh, without tiring the operator's hands. So really flexible, rack mounted, desktop uh, mounted or sitting, um, very cool panel. Now, um, in this video, we will also show uh, something about how these buttons can be labeled because you see we have 24 four-way buttons and uh, they are all RGB colored. Um, they have all OLED displays associated with them. So you can see what is the output name and what is the input source name when you um, uh, work with the panel. All right, so I, I just want to zoom in a little bit so you can see some of these details. So on the left side of the panel, I have all my outputs. So they are grouped in um, a six, um, two by six, so 12 all in all. And then I have my input sources over here. So these input sources will uh, actually reveal which destination they are hooked up to. So currently it says destination number two. And uh, on the small label, you can see it's camera one, source number two, source three, and so forth. And this is all taken from the Kumo router. And uh, at the end here, I have a paging button, which has a graphics uploaded that will, uh, which reveals that when you press the edges of this button, we are actually changing what the, the input selector buttons just next to are doing. Um, you will see we have also an LED bar here, and this one is just following like tally lamp for the buttons above because we have nothing distinct to use this for, so it's just uh, following those. Uh, although for the shift key, it's actually like a um, indicator. You can see that it goes from, from totally blank then to uh, one, two, and then back to blank because we have three pages to go through. Now, uh, if we want to change uh, these uh, or use this for operating sources, then let's just see. We have output number two selected. And you can see in the software here, if I choose destination number two, it's currently routed to input number 11. That's actually this one. So you see if I press 10, uh, 9, 8, 7, and so forth, this is all being routed uh, uh, right away as I press these buttons. So that's pretty easy and straightforward. Now, if I change to uh, to input number three here, then you should notice one thing. Over in this section, if you uh, look in the display, it tells you what is the destination of the route that you currently do. So if I go to input uh, output number four, you can see the title is changing. Now output number five, again, the title is changing. So you know that it's destination number five we are sending this to. Okay, uh, and if you want those uh, names to change, then look here because we can um, we can go to uh, is it configuration? Um, so let's change this label and uh, imagine that destination number five is actually uh, a satellite uh, uplink. Um, so we apply this. And then you see satellite uplink is immediately reflected here as the destination. If I go and change my source, we could change source number three. We say this is um, a recording deck. So recording deck number two and apply. And then you'll see that this is now changed to deck number two right there. So those labels are pulled down from the Kumo router, just like the information about the routes being set. So if I go back uh, to my homepage in the Kumo and we select our um, output here, you will also be able to see that the routes are changing. As I use the web interface for the Kumo router, it's of course reflected on the panel. And uh, likewise, if I press these buttons, it's, it's going forth and back. 
no problem there. Okay, so that was uh, the Kumo router working with the RegFly Uno panel. And uh, in this configuration with paging for the input sources, you can do the same for the output sources. And um, the output labels are actually made differently on this panel than uh, I would normally do. Uh, they are not pulled from the uh, router in this case. Um, instead, I made uh, labels in the configuration. And if you look at the details here, you can see they have uh, they are they have large labels, and then it says output on the on the top row. And the way this is done is if you look uh, over uh, at the configuration page, right here. Uh, this is the configuration for the RegFly Uno we're using. If you go to Manage Media, you can see uh, two things. You can see both all my output labels that I have done manually in this case. Um, first, I have the title, and then um, the uh, like the title bar in the top that says this is an output we select and then the large font um, indication set truck mcr and so forth and then i also have the images uh, that i have uploaded for the paging button so this gives you an idea that it's a really configurable panel so you could in fact upload graphics of whatever you want uh, for your output selection um, instead of using text labels as i've done in this case Ah, there's so much more to say about Unisketch and how you can configure our controllers because they are so flexible. And I could go on forever, but now I'll just stop and let you draw your conclusions on your own. <laughs>